Mindplex has a rich array of game modes which have seen great success over the years. But due to multiple factors such as their slow but steady decline in players, or the splitting of the development team into two groups so that one group could focus on the Mindplex Bedrock server, some of these game modes were no longer maintained, were neglected, or even permanently shut down. All these game modes which I'm going to talk about today were well known or very popular at one stage and while they still may exist on Mindplex, it is sometimes difficult to play them due to lack of players. The game modes were also very original or even one of a kind, not found on any other server and it's a real shame that some of them are no longer around or are no longer being updated. First and foremost, let's talk about Castle Siege, Mindplex's premier game mode which is what gave Mindplex an initial spike in popularity. Castle Siege, released on May the 24th, 2013, was one of the main reasons Mindplex initially got popular. This first version of Castle Siege featured two teams of 30 players and the goal of the game was for one team to try to get into the other team's castle and press a button, effectively sieging it. If the other team did not manage to go to their castle and retake it, as well as press the same button, then they would lose. The game mode was then changed significantly, now known as Castle Siege 2.0, and instead of there being two teams of equal players, there was now one team of players and another two teams, one being undead and the other being wolves. The player's goal was to protect the king, which was in the castle at the top of the hill. The king has a lot of health but cannot do any damage. To do this they had iron gear and weapons such as iron swords and a bow, but they were also allowed to place fences which would block the paths, slowing the undead down as it forced the undead to destroy the fences in order to pass. If the king stayed alive until sunrise then the players would win, and if the players died they would either become an undead or become a wolf depending on how many people on each team. The undead's goal was to kill the king obviously, and the wolf's goal was to help the players. The undead, having access to weapons, could also get TNT to block a path into the king's castle. They could hit the king like normal, but the king had so much health that in order for the undead to win, they would have to overwhelm the defenders and swarm the castle. The wolves are like a weaker version of the player. They can do more damage, but they also have no armor. The game mode was a lot of fun and enjoyed by many players. The original Castle Siege is now permanently unavailable and was removed from the Mindplex server only three months after it was released during August of 2013. Castle Siege 2.0 is also no longer available, having been removed on February the 23rd, 2018, but it is still able to be played through Mindplex's player servers, which are servers which anybody with the legend or higher donator rank can set up. Unfortunately, these servers have a cap on players and the rank also costs $60 for lifetime access, which majority of players aren't willing to pay for. The next game mode which I want to talk about is arguably Mindplex's best and most well-designed game mode they have. Dominate, or it is now known as Champions, did not originate on Mindplex however. On July the 26th, 2013, Mindplex merged with another smaller server named Better MC, home of the original Dominate game mode. With this merger, the developers of the Dominate plugins, mainly Chiss and Defect7, became owners or developers on Mindplex, and Defect7 is still an owner to this day. So let me explain the Dominate game mode, as it can be sort of complex. There are five classes which can be distinguished from each other by armor, there are two teams and the goal of the game is to capture certain control points on a map. Each map has five control points and every second you hold the control point, your team gets some overall points which is what's needed to win. You can also get points from killing other players and capturing the special emerald which appears every now and then. And the first team to 15,000 points wins. As for the classes, well this is where it gets really interesting and unique. Each of the classes has its own set of armor as I mentioned, and its armor signifies what it can do and what its strengths and weaknesses are. What's so unique about the classes in Dominate is they have a bunch of one-of-the-kind abilities which aren't seen on any other server. These abilities can be activated by right-clicking with a sword or an axe, or can be passive, whereby they work by themselves without the player needing to do anything. Some classes can also click Q while holding their weapons to have access to an aura or toggle type of ability. I'll explain about this a bit later. The first class wearing leather armor is called Assassin, whose main abilities are movement based. Assassins due to their weak armor have permanent speed 2 bonus and have many abilities which help them move around such as leap and blink, which are activated by right clicking with the axe. They also have damage abilities with their sword, such as repeated strikes which allows you to do more damage for each consecutive hit you get on a person, and backstab which makes you do more damage when you attack somebody from behind. The next class with gold armor is Mage, Master of the Elements. Now there are many unique mage abilities to do with the elements, so for example there are fire abilities such as Immolate, which when activated make fire come out of you, snow or ice abilities such as Blizzard, which allow you to throw snow at people pushing them away from you, or earth abilities such as Fissure, which create a wall from the ground damaging opponents which it hits. Ranger is the class with the chainmail armor, and is the bow and arrow specialist. 
almost all of the ranger's abilities are designed for the bow. Ranger's abilities feature abilities such as Explosive Arrow, which can be used every 20 seconds and allows you to shoot an arrow which blows up on impact. Ranger also has a bunch of passive abilities which are really cool, such as Overcharge, which lets you charge up your shot by holding it longer, making it deal more damage, and long shot, which makes you do more damage the further away you hit another player from. These abilities combined can allow you to one-shot people if you hit them from long distances. Moving on to the more tanky classes now. First up, we have the Knight in Iron Armor. The Knight has many PvP and defensive abilities, such as Repost, which if timed right, allows you to be invulnerable to attacks for two seconds, and Bull's Charge, which allows you to literally charge into the enemies and damage them. Finally, we have the Brute, the most tanky class in Diamond Armor with abilities intended to do large amounts of damage, such as Block Toss, allowing you to pick up a block and toss it at another player, dealing damage, as well as abilities like Seismic Slam, which allow you to jump up in the air and deal massive damage wherever you land. Combining all the classes together in an all-out brawl is phenomenal and great fun, especially due to the high customizability of abilities and items. However, the game mode is neglected, receiving its last update over two years ago now. Players often complain about how many bugs and exploits which have not been patched are still prominent in the game and are desperate for new updates or features to keep the game mode alive. Champions is struggling, seeing only around 30 players playing it at any given time. Because the game mode has similarities to massively popular MOBAs such as Dota 2 and League of Legends, it needs frequent updates to keep the game balanced and enjoyable because players eventually find builds which are too strong and will dominate the game. Champions players often complain about Assassin being too strong, as well as abilities in certain classes being too easy to use or far too effective. But all they get from the developers is radio silence, as they seem to not care about the game mode at all. Arguably one of Mineplex's most popular and well-known game modes from when the server was at its peak during 2014 and 2015, Super Smash Mobs is an incredibly unique and original game mode with many abilities and features not found on any other servers. For those of you who don't know what it is or have forgotten, it's basically a Minecraft version of the wildly popular game Super Smash Bros. On Mineplex, there are 21 different mobs which you can choose from, although the majority have to be unlocked with gems. Each mob has about two different abilities unique to its class, so for example, the Blaze Mob can shoot fire and dash through the air, and the Wither Skeleton can shoot a Wither Skull and send a copy of itself forwards. The players also look like the mobs, which is really cool and adds to the immersion. The game consists of four players, each starting with four lives each, and the last alive wins. In order to kill a player, you either have to knock them off the map, which is quite difficult considering you are able to double jump or reduce their hearts to zero. You regenerate health quite slowly and have to fight otherwise your food bar will go down and kill you. It's quite a lot of fun, but it has the same issues which Champions has. The game mode hasn't been updated for two and a half years, the last update being in January of 2018. The game mode requires updates and balance patches to be enjoyable as over time players will find the strongest classes and figure out the perfect playstyle which becomes overpowered. Like the Champions community, the Super Smash Mobs community often complains about certain classes being far too strong, or they complain about the many bugs and exploits, which have still yet to be fixed. Super Smash Mobs is another one of Mineplex's most creative and original game modes, which has just been neglected until there are barely 20 players playing it at any given time. Wizards, released on May the 1st, 2015, was an incredibly enjoyable game mode where 8 to 12 players would fight to the death with an array of spells, items and abilities, and the last player standing wins. The game mode was very original and it was like a unique battle royale. When the game started, players would have to find chests scattered around the map which would contain items and spellbooks. Spellbooks can be used to learn spells which will be then assigned to an item called a spell wand. The spells can either be offensive such as fireball which shoots a fireball in a player's direction doing massive damage on impact or defensive spells such as heal which heal up your health. There are also a bunch of miscellaneous spells which can either alter the environment such as frost barrier which creates a wall of ice in front of you. There were also a few kits which could give you certain bonuses such as Mage, which started out with two spells, and Witch Doctor, which had increased mana. The game mode was very popular amongst players, but was unfortunately removed in 2018, and is actually permanently unavailable, meaning it can't even be played in Mindplex player servers. Players commonly reminisce about this game mode as it was very cherished in the community and is dearly missed. Our final game mode for today is UHC, which means Ultra Hardcore. If you don't know what UHC is, it's basically a large-scale Hunger Games where players can build and destroy blocks. 
There are approximately 100 players placed in a large map, often 2000 by 2000 blocks, and the last player alive wins. The game mode can be very challenging and difficult, especially for new players, as you only have 10 minutes to get gear before PvP is turned on. A key feature of UHC is the fact that you don't regenerate health naturally, like in normal Minecraft, and the only way to regenerate health is from potions or golden apples, which can be difficult to obtain. UHC has always been popular within the competitive PvP community, and is still very popular on Hypixel. When Mineplex removed the game mode in 2019, it lost its competitive Minecraft player base, significantly reducing the server's play count and relevancy. The game mode is also permanently unavailable, not playable in Mineplex player servers. The removal of UHC has often been credited as the sole reason why Mineplex lost so much of its competitive player base. So today we covered some of Mineplex's most creative, unique and popular game modes which are either neglected or are no longer available to play. The treatment these game modes have received is really unfortunate as many of them, like Champions, are incredibly unique and are not available on any other server and probably never will be. The communities of players who still play these game modes, or who once did, have tried to make suggestions and improve the game, but their suggestions fall on deaf ears as the Mineplex staff team don't seem to care. I hope you enjoyed today's video, be sure to comment your favourite game mode in the comments down below, be sure to subscribe, thank you so much for watching.